My name is James R. Dixon, and I'm the producing artistic director for Blackout, presented by the Fuse Theater Ensemble and Outright Theater Festival. I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for showing up. I mean, you totally showed up for the event, but more importantly, you are showing up for Black love, Black joy, Black abundance, Black resistance, Black liberation, Black bodies, and all of the gender fluidity and queerness in between. The past year has been so hard for many of us, and now more than ever, it is important that we tell our own stories. So I am petitioning others to answer this call by prioritizing the voices, the safety, the needs, and the creative endeavors of Black, Indigenous, and other melanated communities. This happens on your board of directors, in your audiences, within your donor base, and at the voting polls, and in the streets. It also happens alongside us here at Blackout. If you weren't ready before, this is your grand opportunity to get ready because time is up. This is only the beginning and we are rooted in our purpose. If you have any questions about future programming, collaborations, or ways to support, please feel free to email us at fusetheaterensemble at gmail.com. Enjoy and welcome to the revolution. Apologies to Lorraine Hansberry, You Too, August Wilson, by Rachel Lynette, The Block. Jules, she, her, hers, 30s, Black, works at a community garden, food engineer. Lorenzo, he, him, his, Black, 30s, works as a game developer. Alice, she, her, hers, 30s, chef, Black. Lorenzo's wife in part one and Jules' wife in part two. Yeah, yeah. She, her, hers. Afro Latinx, Jules' girlfriend, 30s, was working as a social worker. Isaac, he, him, his, Black artist, 30s, lives on the block. Mostly Lorenzo's friend in part one and Lorenzo's boyfriend in part two. Prologue Alice steps out to address the audience. Hi, I'm Alice in the play, but right now I'm basically the playwright addressing you directly. White folks call what I'm about to do exposition, but the black folks in the audience know I'm about to preach. The world you're about to see ain't yours. It's not a parallel universe. It's not an alternate reality. It's something else. It lives in the imagination of every person of color who has had to live through the Trump administration. So in this world, after Trump was elected, there was what was known as the Second Civil War. It lasted from November 2016 to August 2019. The war broke out literally after it was announced that the motherfucking electoral college thought it was cool to put a white supremacist with dementia in office. On August 19, 2019, a peace treaty was signed. The compromise was that Trump would stay president, but Cory Booker became the new VP. Not sure why it had to be him. I think he gave an impassioned speech at the right time. I don't know. I always knew he was trifling, but I don't really trust Kamala either. So anyway, as part of the race war treaty, four new states were created. Bronx Bay, Tehan, Quint, and Mixie. Technically, the treaty really only created Mixie, which was everything south of Tampa in Florida. To live in Mixie, you got to be POC. And that was all good until everyone remembered anti-Blackness is international and subconscious, so Black people took the bay. We said, if it's north of Santa Cruz, it's ours now. And since it was about to be another civil war, Congress ratified it as a new state and called it Bronx Bay. Why Bronx Bay? Racism. We wanted it to be called hashtag yay area, but only the real ones know about that. Well then, Latinos were like, uh, the fuck? So everything south of Houston became Tehan and you gotta be Latin to live there. Then queer people were like, excuse me? And then everything north of Eugene, Oregon became Quint and you gotta be queer to live there. 
It all gets super intense and I'm sure other groups will protest and be like, what about us? But this, this right here, isn't about them. This right here is about Bronx Bay. To my people, feel free to stomp, whistle, clap, holler. Just know I wanna be out of here in 90 minutes. So, you know, do it in a way that don't mess us up while we are on stage. To the white people here, thanks for coming, I guess. Your visitor pass to Bronx Bay will expire in 100 minutes and we will keep watch. All right, let's go. Alice starts to leave the stage. The lights change and then she comes back. Wait, one more thing. In the prologue of Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare tells you everything that's gonna happen in the play and that's one of the most produced plays in the country. So if anybody is butthurt about this exposition, I want you to think about the reasons why you're coming for this play, but at the same time saying Shakespeare was the greatest playwright of all time. All right, for real, I gotta finish putting on my makeup. I'm out. Alice leaves the stage. Scene one, Jules comes out on her front porch drinking iced tea and reading the newspaper. We see the front of Jules's, Alice and Lorenzo's and Isaac's brownstones. Despite having brownstones, they all have front porches with furniture unique to each of them. They also all have pristine front lawns. Lorenzo comes out holding up a copy of My Bondage and My Freedom by Frederick Douglass. Why are you trying to stunt, Lorenzo? What? Frederick Douglass. You got Audre Lorde hidden in your pants. Ooh, you think she fit? You know you ain't never read My Bondage and My Freedom. I mean, what, you got x-ray vision now? How can you even see all the way over here? I ain't blind. You're holding it up like you want the whole world to see. I, you right, you right. Alice is reading it. I thought I might, I don't know. I tried to read it and I was like, damn, this is not the light read I was expecting. What part of bondage seems light to you? Ooh, I mean, depending on what you're into. Lorenzo! He was our 16th president. He's why people that look like you and people that look like me ain't got to pick cotton anymore. I expected this to be, I don't know, at least uplifting, but it is depressing as hell. It's about slavery. Slavery was depressing. I mean, I guess. Yael getting okay? Yeah, she got in last night. I'm supposed to invite you both to dinner. Is this the invitation? I don't know. I hate having people over. Alice gets all intense about the kitchen, thinks she got to show off. I was actually just about to read the review of her new restaurant. Don't. And don't even mention it to her if you see her. Why not? Because uh, it was reviewed by Konome Wyatt, who was like best friends with Christina Washington. And apparently Konome was completely unfair and misunderstood what she was trying to do. I don't know who anyone you just mentioned is. Well, Konome is a food critic, but she's very like uh, power to the people. Okay, why is that? Alice is making fusion food, which is not according to Konome, you know, power to the people. Alice's grandfather was Korean, so it makes right, sense. Right, that... it makes sense to us, but come on. Soon do gumbo don't sound weird to you? Sundu what? It's a blend of sundu boo, a Korean tofu soup, and gumbo. You know what ain't got no place in gumbo? Tofu. Are you still inviting me to dinner? You still want to come? Sure. And I'll ask Alice to make her sundu gumbo. No, thank you. See, I knew I wasn't the only. Alice comes out. She eyes Lorenzo. Hi, Jules. Alice? You coming over tonight? I just got invited. What time? You didn't text her last night? No, I forgot. I told you to do it while your phone was in your hand. Yes, dear, I realize that, <sighs> but I didn't. So how can we move forward? Don't try to therapist shit on me. I'm not. We went to couples therapy in order to And you ain't got to air our business either. What time? For dinner? Seven. You're bringing Yael, right? I can't believe she was able to come in. I mean, I know a ton of Black people who can't get in yet. 
well, she's moving in with me, so housing isn't an issue for her. Are you excited? It's a big step. After watching you two, I'm a little concerned. <gasps> she playing. All right, I gotta go check on the restaurant. Don't talk bad about my food, Lorenzo. Alice leaves. Your wife is so sweet. I didn't marry her because she was sweet. I feel like this is going to take a turn. So I'd like to remind you, Renzo, that just because I like women, that does not mean I want to shoot the shit about how hot your wife is. She is though. Okay. Yael is black, right? What? Yes, of course. Okay, I just, I've never met a black Yael before. Lorenzo? Your name is Lorenzo. Fair. All right. See you tonight. Lorenzo heads inside his house. Jules opens the newspaper and tries to read it. Then she closes it and heads inside. Scene two. Later that evening on Alice and Lorenzo's porch, Yael comes out holding a glass of wine. She looks around the street almost as though she can feel it looking back at her. Jules, also holding a glass of wine, comes outside. Hey. Hey. Alice can be a bit intense. Yes, that is a bit of an understatement. We're having a second dinner, right? One with me in it? Not, Not that it wasn't delicious. I just... I get it. I'm always hungry again in like an hour if I only eat vegetarian dishes. Lorenzo holding a beer and Alice drinking water come outside. That's because you overeat. I don't. You're just not aware of it. It's in your head. You're not hungry. You're just being a brat. Or I'm hungry. I think I'm old enough to know when I'm hungry. You're not. Most times you're just thirsty. Thank you for a wonderful evening, Alice. It is gorgeous out tonight. Of course. Come over anytime. Yeah, but knock a couple of times. If we're in the back, we, we can't hear you. <sighs> I'm honestly surprised there are brownstones here. Like, don't get me wrong. I love them. They're beautiful. But why not have a house? Oh, we didn't want that much space. After Bronx Bay was established last year, anyone who, could, who got in could choose between a house, an apartment, or brownstone. For some people, owning land is a major thing and a lot of land. Rightfully so. And for some people, I, I just don't need that much space, you know. If you go further up north, you'll see bigger houses. But the whole state didn't need to be reclaiming plantations. Yael's phone rings. She answers. Hola, mami. It's you bien? Yael walks away further down the block to finish the phone call. Alice eyes Jules. Okay, hold on. I speak French. Am I suddenly not black? Jules, come on. Her name is Yael. She talks to her mom in Spanish. Do you talk to your mom in Spanish? My mom died during the war. Did you talk to her in Spanish or French or whatever when she was alive? Wow, Alice. Alice, you know her mom died just last year. What did my brother? He didn't die last year. He died at the beginning of the war. And it's not fair for you. My uncle died last year. So did Lorenzo's dad. We lost a lot of people. So that makes it even more important to me that we adhere to the rules. Alice, you're not... Yale is black. How else would she have gotten in? System isn't perfect yet. Sometimes the tests take too long to process. Okay, and no people offense, could... Jules, but have you asked? Do you ask every black person you're going to see if they're really black or not? If they were speaking Spanish, I would. Hi, sorry. My mom was worried that I hadn't gotten and checked in yet. Are you black? What? Are you black or not? This is ridiculous. Alice, you cannot- How come you speak Spanish? Why do you cook Korean fusion food? Because my mother was half Korean. Does that make you not black? No, it doesn't. Answer my question. Alice. You realize Bronx Bay is an all black state, right? And there are tons of reasons why. Should I list them? Can we go? Yeah. Um, 
Thanks for dinner, Alice. Wait, no, don't. Let's not end the night this way. Okay, Yael obviously had to take the DNA test to live here, so it's a moot point. And we've seen how even the DNA test isn't always foolproof. I'm going home. Yael leaves the front porch and goes next door. If this is the part where I say I'm sorry. I didn't ask, but it's more than just a DNA test, Alice. Yes, sometimes it's faulty, but there's a series of tests you have to pass to get in. None of those tests are perfect. Just last week, I was reading- <laughs> I can't do this with you tonight, Alice. I'm going home. She needs to leave, Jules. She's black, Alice. Jules leaves. Lorenzo glares at Alice. Scene three. In Alice and Lorenzo's house, Lorenzo is watching TV while working on his computer, while Alice is on the couch reading the newspaper. In Jules and Yael's living room, Jules is working on her computer and Yael is on the floor preparing a lesson plan. In both living rooms, it's tense. I just think you could have been kinder about it. I speak Spanish, but you're not hounding me about why I speak Spanish. I just wish you would have defended me more. I asked your mother where she was born when I met her. Which was racist. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't racist. Black people are born all over the world. But you know what else is born all over the world? Anti-blackness. It took me by surprise. I just didn't. Alice is a steamroller, you know? And it, it took me a second to catch up to what she was. There was a lot of good reasons why Bronx Bay needs to be all black. It's just one state. Now, all not all the black people in the country live here, but- I understand the reasons why this state needs to exist. I don't need a history lesson. Yael is obviously not anti-black. I'm sorry, how is that obvious? Because she's with Jules? Jules is borderline anti-black. Alice. She still uses chemicals in her hair, but claims to be natural. Oh my God, I can't do this with you again. Right, I shouldn't have. I'm glad you're here. Yeah? I mean it, I am. Thank you for moving here. You don't think it's kind of strange that there are entire states you can't go to? What? It doesn't bother you that you can't just go to Tehan just to visit? No because I understand what it is and why it needs to be this way. It was the only way to end the war. Why is everyone treating me like some kind of Disney villain? I'm just reminding everyone that there are rules. People died for those rules and to recklessly abandon them. No just one is abandoning them. Yael took the DNA test like we all did. Did she? Plus they're sloppy with delivery and enforcement. I took the test. I was 75% black, so I didn't have to take the other test. Meanwhile, didn't you have to do the electric slide or something? What exactly are all of the tests? Why is it that public knowledge? Alice, you need to, we should apologize. I'm not apologizing until she tells me she's black, definitively. What, what, what are you gonna ask the governor to see what test she took? Oh. That's a good idea. I bet I could at least request her DNA test. Alice. Alice pulls out her phone to start researching. My mom lives in Tehan. Oh. So like long-term, how do you meet my mother? You can't go to Tehan and she can't come here. The only way to request a DNA test is if you're related and it's usually as a defense in court. Jules and I are kind of related. Legally. Kind of, but that's not the related they're talking about. Legal relations should count. Alice. I called her mom auntie. Oh, we're black. If we don't call adults uncle or auntie, we don't fuck with them. Yes, we are black. Yael though, something in the chicken grease don't smell right. Alice, please let this go. Alice keeps researching on her phone. So if your mom lives in Tehan, um, are your parents together? Where, where does your dad live? Jules. I just assumed that we met in New York and I should have asked then, but I didn't. And I always went to visit you in Jersey. So I realized I never, I mean, it feels like a weird thing to ask someone, but, but if life 
but life is gonna be hella weird if I don't. So, are you not black? I'm Dominican. Okay. Um, but I'm also black. You can be both. I think a lot of Dominicans would disagree with you. And you and I would disagree with them. So your mom doesn't see herself as black? I am not my mom. Okay, well, what about your dad? I'm not talking about this with you. Oh, that's right. You can request a proof copy as long as you have this reasonable doubt and are able to explain your doubt in front of a jury. Alice. It's like a $15 mailing fee. I bet Jules could just ask for Yael's. Shouldn't Yael have a copy? Alice. Don't Alice me. I'm just... Be right back. She runs out of the room. Lorenzo looks after her but doesn't get up. I'm sorry. Thank you. But I need to know. My dad was Haitian, but I never met him. Are we done with this now? But you identify as black, right? I've already said that. If I told you to choose between being black or being gay, which would you choose? I'm both. Right, but don't places like Bronx Bay and Tehan and Quinn kind of force you to choose? No, I don't. I'm proudly out, but I would only ever live in Bronx Bay. Alice comes back. Are you okay? Yeah, it's just the baby. Should I call Dr. Reynolds? No, I'm all right. Uh, I actually might uh, go lay down for a bit. Okay. You know, stress only makes it worse. I'm not stressed. I just want... I want us to be safe. Okay. Alice kisses him and then leaves the room. It feels like a broken system. Why did you move here if you didn't? Because I want to be with you. And you will only live here. This is the safest place for me. Is this? We're talking a lot about anti-Blackness, but what about queer phobia in the Black community? Isn't Quint technically safer? Yeah, yeah, I don't. Let's not do this tonight. Fine. I'm going to bed. I'm tired anyway. Yael leaves. Lorenzo picks up his phone to call Jules. He keeps the phone on speaker. She holds it to her ear. Hi. Hi. Is it as rough over there as it is over here? Yes, probably. Alice is about to ask you for Yael's DNA test. DNA test won't help much. I'm sure she tested as black, but... But? I, uh, I don't know. Good night, Renzo. Jules hangs up. Scene four. Lights change with house lights at half. Alice comes back out, dressed up as a professor. She has a dry erase board and a marker. I have already made it clear that I am a chef. So this is obviously one of those highly theatrical moments where a character steps out of the world to relay some information to you. And if that wasn't obvious, luckily, I've stated it plainly. So we're all on the same page. Why do it this way and not neatly tuck into the world of play? Maybe some highly tense moment of dialogue. Well, because y'all don't listen. Y'all like to pretend like you missed it. So here I am in a tweed jacket giving you more exposition. I know it's exposition. You know it's exposition. But here we are. I believe in your programs there's a blank page where you can take notes. It's not my fault if you did not think to bring a pencil to a play. How are you gonna take notes in your programs? How are you gonna get my autograph? Ready? Okay, so our histories are similar. In the beginning, Christopher Columbus still sailed the ocean blue. Although it's important to me that y'all know he never actually stepped a foot in the United States. So I don't know why we're obsessed with including him in all our history books, but leave out, mm, I don't know, the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, which totally happened in the United States. Anyway, so slavery still happened. Thanks for that. No, I haven't forgotten or forgiven. But here's where it gets tricky. 
Abraham Lincoln ran against Frederick Douglass, who was pretending to be a white man. Frederick Douglass won and became the 16th president of the United States. He wrote into law that all slaves were freed, point blank, and should be paid for their labor. Well, as you can imagine, a lot of people didn't like that. So the Civil War happened. The North won and the slaves were freed and given 40 acres and a mule. Well, sort of. Frederick Douglass wrote a law that said all slaves were entitled to 40 acres and a mule, but Congress pushed back because there wasn't enough land. So then it was each family got 40 acres and a mule and family was loosely defined. Like if your fifth cousin twice removed got land, you ain't getting no land. And we all know how trifling cousins can be. So what happened was an elite class of land owning black folk hired the lower class of black folk to work for them for pennies. Frederick Douglass didn't like it, but didn't matter because he was shot during one of his speeches and his security did nothing about it because days before people discovered he was black. It was an open secret, but some people are slow. After that, white people went wild. I mean, let's be real. White people always doing some wild shit, but this was one of those peak moments. They burned down the land that was given to the elite black landowners and made it so nothing could grow on that land again. They said they'd rather destroy the soil than let a nigger have it. Alice wipes off her white erase board. Scene five. The next evening, Lorenzo and Jules are rolling a blunt on Isaac's front porch. Where's Alice tonight? Work. <laughs> Didn't you tell her you quit smoking? No, she asked me to quit and I said, I hear you. I cannot be held accountable if she misunderstood my intention. Right. Jules finishes rolling and smokes it first. It's a deep inhale. Okay, calm down. We're sharing, remember? Sorry. She passes the blunt to Isaac. What's going on with you? Didn't your girl move in? Shouldn't you be... I don't want to talk about it. That's why I stay single. Y'all be tripping. Uh, no, you stay single because don't nobody got time for that artist temperament of yours. Oh, is that what we're calling it now? I mean, it feels rude to say he be having tantrums. I do not throw tantrums. I'm a grown ass man. But what happened to Dom? He said he wanted more commitment than I was able to give him. Uh-huh. Y'all coming to my art show? I don't know. Your work is uh, depressing. I'm sorry recording our history through artistic expression is depressing to you. Thank you. I appreciate the apology. You remember that one show back in New York where it was all about barbed wire and lynching? Oh my god, yes. The show was supposed to be uplifting. It wasn't about lynching. It was about the material used to... Whatever. That's the show that got me the on the MacArthur shortlist. If it hadn't been for the war, you would have got it. Thanks. What's the show about? I did a photography series on black kids going to school for the first time in Bronx Bay. Like I photographed the same kids for a week. You should have seen their faces lit up. It was like, I don't even know what it was like, inspiring. For the first time, these kids won't be ignored. They won't be told they're not smart enough. They won't, I mean, fuck. It's just, y'all should come. It's Saturday? Next Saturday is the opening, yeah. But it'll be up all month. Maybe I'll talk Alice into going. So not all black people live in Bronx Bay. like. Obviously, some people choose not to live here. Jules, this, this isn't the Wait, time. I swear, I'm going somewhere. I just don't think you should I be so, talking. Like, there were Black people. There are Black people who actively support and protect white supremacy. Yeah, duh. That's why we had to take the test. But, okay. So, if all skin folk aren't kin folk, then isn't fair, then it isn't fair to reason that some kin folk aren't skin folk? Jules, this isn't the time no, to talk about- Non-Black people who are just 
what down with us yeah is that so hard to believe and isn't going by percentages the exact same thing white people did to us and yeah there's the implicit bias test but that's not foolproof either some of our biases were inherited and socialized into us so like we're basically reinventing the brown paper bag test and put it in reverse you took an implicit bias test you didn't Jules, what's going on? I just, Alice's grandfather was Korean. Lorenzo, your mom is Mexican. My mom is Afro-Mexican and she had to flee Mexico because her people, my people were being slaughtered. Right, I know, I, okay. My grandfather, my grandmother was Dutch. Am I not black enough? What does black mean anyway? What does, does black mean African? doesn't mean anyone with dark skin. And I know this had to be our reality, this, that this is just one small space, but what if someone else needed shelter and wanted to be in this community with the community they perceived to be theirs? Last week, two different families got evicted, had to leave the state. One of them was just a white woman with dreadlocks and tanned herself. She taught the African diaspora history at the college, and no one could believe she wasn't black. So people like her. You're saying people who try on our culture like Halloween costumes should be able to stay? No, well, I, obviously not people like her, but people who are, I don't know what I'm saying. She's just high. <laughs> yeah, I should head home. See you later. Jules leaves. Anything you want to tell me? Nah. How's that game working over there? Oh, it's great. Yeah, I, I think they're really going to like it. If you tell me what's going on, it, it'll make it easier for everyone. I know you remember how things went when you weren't being honest before. I don't want to have to. I ain't got shit to say. Lorenzo gets up and leaves. Scene six. Later that evening, Jules is on her front porch drinking a beer. Alice in her chef uniform comes walking down the block heading home. They see each other. Alice goes to join Jules on her front porch. Jules tries to pass Alice a beer. Alice shakes her head. Yeah, smart. It's one, it's a new one they're rolling out and it's not good. What is it? Coconut ale. Beer made from coconut. Like, I love coconuts as much as the next person, but we might be wearing it out. And we wore it out a long time ago. <laughs> How's the restaurant? Fine, I guess. Slow day today. You smell. What? You smell. It's not bad exactly, but it's not pleasant. Thank you. Or is it the beer? Alice leans over to smell the beer. It's not the beer. I went on a run and haven't showered yet. Ah, you ever going back to work? <laughs> every time with you, I work every day, Alice. I thought a little bit of old banter would be nice. How's Ayel? She's at the university tonight for a symposium on diasporic art and culture. You didn't want to go? I love the idea of being with someone deeply entrenched in our culture, but I can't listen to Black men talk about how they're the reason we have it. <laughs> God, there should be a city in Bronx Bay just for Black women. Wouldn't that be nice? Would the men need visas to visit for booty calls? Who needs sex when you're finally actually free? Me. And you should too. It's part of the freedom. Sex? Yes, sexual freedom. Meh. I'm sorry. Lorenzo finally convinced you to apologize? Sorta. He's a good man. He is. I'm lucky he puts up with me. Although, I guess at this point, I've got him trapped for the next 18 years. He's not trapped. Wait, what? 
<laughs> I'm pregnant. <laughs> That's amazing. How far along are you? Three months today. We're finally in the place where we can tell people. Jules hugs Alice. Congratulations, Alice. Seriously. Thanks. After the last miscarriage, I wasn't sure. Thanks. Any names picked out yet? Lorenzo really likes Addison. I am not into it. My mom took me home for five days before she named me. I'd like to do something like that. Before that kind of thing would be illegal, but luckily doctors here are more open to our cultural history. Anyway, you should get to know a child before you name them. That's sweet. Yeah. I know we're not supposed to pre-gender our babies, but I, I think it's a boy. Yeah. Yeah. And that worries me. Alice. I know we're safe here, but for how long? If we start letting people in, how long before another Black boy is murdered in the streets or on the with me? Jules, my brother was ripped out of his home. Alice, I was there. And they killed him, shot him on the front lawn. Alice, I don't want to read I know we're not supposed to talk about it, but we need to talk about it. Alice, we have talked about it. He loved you. I loved him too. He's the reason I wanted to move here. And I, I miss him. And I just worry. We moved here, so we wouldn't need to worry like this. Alice, we're safe. It's not- Safe for how long, Jules? You know how many Black folk thought they were safe or dead now? Killed in their bedrooms, their living rooms, their cars, the gym. You don't need to remind me. I know it's not a perfect system, but it falls completely apart when we break the rules. At least I know in Bronx Bay, my son will not be targeted just for the color of his skin. I need to know that it will stay that way. Drew, Drew was the love of my life. We want the same things. Do we? Alice, I'm happy for you. You and Lorenzo will make great parents. I'm not trying to be- It's a nice a night. The weather's nice. The sky is clear. Jules, I'm not saying- I that loved you... Drew. I still love Drew. I still have my wedding dress hanging in the back of my closet. We've all lost a lot here and I have not forgotten about that. But I think strict definitions of Blackness aren't any better than anti-Blackness. I'm not advocating for strict definitions yeah, of- you are. You haven't asked me about Yael. You just made up your mind about her and now you're just moving forward regardless of the answer. Good night, Jules. Night. Alice leaves the porch. Scene seven, it's a block party. Lorenzo has a grill out on the front lawn. Alice is sitting on her porch reading and watching Lorenzo. Jules and Yael are on their porch. It's a cookout and a celebration. Y'all really do know how to turn up for a party. <laughs> All you gotta say is cookout and Lorenzo pulls out his grill and Alice puts on her playlist. <laughs> this is celebrating the establishment of Bronx Bay. Yeah. And also just because Black folks love a cookout. <laughs> because we're the best at it. You know, I think other people just call this a barbecue. You mean white people. <laughs> they all start enjoying the music in their corners. Y'all really going to stay over there on your porch? Y'all could come over here. <laughs> Please tell me there is at least one SWV song on this playlist. There is not. What? Leave the 90s behind, Jules. <laughs> Isaac enters with an object that is not a gun, but the characters recognize it as a gun and accept it as a gun. Lorenzo sees him first. Not now, Isaac. Yael Gomez, you're under citizen's arrest. Fuck. Isaac points the gun at Yael. You better put that down, Isaac. I work for the citizen's police. Yael, you do not belong here. Lower the gun, Isaac. Come peacefully and nothing has to happen. What is going on? Bronx Bay is black only. Unless y'all don't stand for that anymore. This is excessive. How do you think it was regulated? You thought, oh, just because you love someone, it'll be fine? 
You think you're the only person who's ever loved someone who has, wasn't the same race as you? You think you're the only one who had to make a sacrifice? Yael, I won't ask again. Yael looks at Jules. Wait, is this real? This feels extra as fuck. Like, how did we escalate so quickly to citizen's arrest? That's what this is, right? Doing what the script told me to do. It doesn't fit your character, though. Y'all can say something when you're in rehearsal? Does this feel like the right time? So, are we just done with this part? This just doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel right. Let's start over. Lights flash. End of part one. Part two, prologue. Jules stands on stage in a colonial cosplay getup. She sits waiting and not patiently. Yael comes out dressed in all black, dressed up as a stereotypical film director from the 1940s. We're starting over. <laughs> I know that. Pointing to the audience. I'm telling them. You're not even in the right era. Are we even sticking to this era this time? Get off the stage. <sighs> Yael takes her time getting off. All right, damn. Please continue to take your time. White folks call what I'm about to do exposition, but black folks in the audience know I'm about to preach. The world you're about to see ain't yours. It's not a parallel universe. It's not alternate reality, it's something else. It lives in the imagination of every person of color in this room. When I get bored, I like to remove one historical event and say to myself, would that make the playing field fair? What if there had been a revolt when Trump got elected? Or what if there had been no slavery? Like at all. Can you even imagine the world without it? Our whole socio ecosystem is built on the backs of people who look like me. And I know, I know, I know the playwright's hand is showing, get over it. That's kind of the point. So resetting the clock. Slavery never existed. And since I know some of y'all are trifling, let me be clear, the African diaspora due to, due to slavery of West Africans never happened. The Romans still enslaved the Greeks and the idea of slavery still exists. But black people, my people, we were not slaves. We weren't forced onto ships. Our names and our family histories weren't taken from us. That's all been erased. During the Industrial Revolution, there was a giant migrations of Africans across the world, but especially to Great Britain and the colonies. Though no one came through trying to steal resources from continental Africa, no one came through with the resources either. The African people became incredibly advanced, but the only way to mass produce the technology was to take it overseas themselves. Black folk all over the world came up with brilliant inventions and became scientists, doctors, inventors. But thanks to general xenophobia, many of their inventions, the credit to who invented what, was stolen from them. And when they tried to speak out against it, suddenly people started going missing. And then more and more people went missing. Names vanished from history. Y'all should know, history was written by white folk anyway. Jules leaves the stage. Scene one, we're back on the block, but in a different impossible time. The houses have shifted. Lorenzo and Isaac's house is Jules' house from part one. Alice and Jules' house is Isaac's house from part one. Yael's house is in between the two. Alice is on the front porch cross-stitching. Yael pulls up with suitcases. You must be the new neighbor. I am. Well, welcome to the neighborhood. Thanks, um, Yael. Alice. 
Uh, I was on the wait list for a while. I didn't think I was going to be able to get in. Yeah, they're pretty strict about it. You'd think they were asking, you were asking to go to a different country and not just a gated neighborhood. <laughs> it's gorgeous here. It really is. How far along are you? Oh, is it that obvious? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. No, it, it's okay. I guess it's safe to start telling people. I just didn't realize I was showing. Three months. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Thanks. Jules comes outside holding two lemonades. She kisses Alice quickly and then notices Yao. Oh. New neighbor. Hi, I'm Jules. Welcome to Bronx Bay. Thanks. I'm Yao. Is it just you? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to pry. No, it's okay. I know mostly couples live on this block. Families, yeah. My partner broke up with me right before. Anyway, I had already put a down payment down, so here I am. Would you want to come over for dinner? What? Dinner. I'm a chef. I'm cooking anyway <sighs> for friends of ours, for Lorenzo and Isaac. It's Isaac's birthday, and we always do a birthday dinner. I, I wouldn't want to I'm intrude. inviting you. It'd be nice to get to know our new neighbor. Um, yeah, sure. Oh, no. Do you smell that? Alice runs inside. She had something on the stove. <laughs> I figured. I'm sorry about your partner. Yeah, me too. How long were you together? 10 years. Shit. Yeah, shit. Um, do you mind if I... Oh, oh, no. Sorry, I wasn't trying to keep you from moving in. <laughs> Yael goes into her out house. Alice returns back out. Did she go inside? She did. She's coming to dinner? I think so. She knew I was pregnant. Is it supposed to be a secret? You barely knew. I did not barely know. It's not like I accidentally knocked you up. <laughs> I think she's pregnant. What? Pregnant women notice each other. You think she's pregnant just because she could tell you were? Yes. I'm not showing yet. Alice. What? Can you imagine being a single mother in a neighborhood like this? Please don't be weird at dinner. I never... I won't, but I know I'm right. Jules kisses Alice and they go inside. Alice watches Yael's house. Scene two. At Jules and Alice's house, Alice puts the final plate on the table. Jules opens a bottle of wine. After a beat, Lorenzo and Isaac enter. Y'all clothed? Oh my God. Lorenzo and Jules hug while Isaac and Alice hug and then switch. Jules pours a glass of wine for everyone except Alice, who drinks out of a juice box. Why? I wanted to make you feel guilty that I can't drink right now. I don't ever feel guilty about drinking. Oh, you should. It's my birthday. You really gonna do me like that on my birthday? Lorenzo kisses Isaac playfully. Happy birthday, babe. What did y'all do today? Same thing we do every year. It's tradition. Birthday sex in the morning, hiking. You really don't have to tell us that you had birthday sex. Oh, but bitch, I just did. Oh. And then hiking in the afternoon. How many miles did you get? It's not weird for you to hear your brother had sex. I'm an adult, Alice. God, I hope he's having sex and lots of it. Thank you, baby sis. <laughs> You're welcome. Only four miles this year. Why? Oh! They all turn to Alice. There are easier ways to get attention. I invited our new neighbor over. Oh my God. Who? The woman that moved in? Why? She's alone. And pregnant. She is not pregnant. But this block is supposed to be for people- Her partner left her. Oh, they still let her move in? It's not a strict rule, the whole family thing. You don't, you two don't have kids yet. Well, actually. There's a knock on the front door. 
I'll get it. Alice leaves the room to get the door. Well, actually. Not now. I'll tell you later. Did the adoption come through? Not now. Alice returns with Yael, who is holding a casserole dish. Oh, let me take that. Jules looks at Lorenzo like, why would you? And then takes it and sets it on the table. Hi, I'm Lorenzo. Hi, Vic. Yeah, yeah. Um, nice to meet you. So you're our new neighbor. I am. The neighborhood is perfect, isn't it? Have you gotten a chance to go by the school? Yeah, I did. It's it's great. I really like how they've updated the Montessori method to be more inclusive. What do you do? Lorenzo. I'm not trying to be rude. I, I just want to know. I'm what... I'm a teacher. I actually will be working at the school in the fall. Oh, that's great. You can walk there. It's so close. Yeah. <laughs> Are you pregnant? What? Are you pregnant? Jules glares at Alice. If it was awkward before, it just got more awkward. We're <laughs> adopting twins! Lorenzo. What? I wanted to make it less awkward, but that's, like, that's exciting, right? That's amazing! <laughs> yeah! Jules runs over to hug them both. Alice keeps watching Yao. Should I go? Of course not. Alice is... She's hormonal. That's not an excuse. Alice is just a very intense person in general. <laughs> well, congrats on the twins. Thank you. We found out today. <laughs> Let's cheers to it. Yael, why? Unless he can't. Alice. This is exciting. Wine would be great. Jules nods and pours Yael some wine. Yael drinks it quickly. Jules pours her some more. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. They all raise their glasses Cheers. and cheer. Let's eat before the food gets cold. They move towards the dinner table. How old will they be? The twins? Five. Oh, that is great. That is a great age. We didn't want babies because everyone wants babies, but teenagers seemed so too... No, five. Five is perfect. Scene three. Jules comes out on stage. She's dressed like a talk show host. Isaac, Lorenzo, and Yael all come out as contestants. Do welcome to Do You Know Your Own History? A sound of recorded audience cheer. Today we have three contestants, but only one of them can be the winner. For $100, what is the great displacement? Isaac hits his buzzer first. Uh, um, in 1850, over a million Black inventors and their families went missing. To this day, no one knows what happened. Very good. Recorded audience cheer. Next question for $500. What happened in 1965? Isaac <sighs> and Yael both hit their buzzers. The system is showing me you were first. In the 1965, the separatist doctrine became law. It ruled that any person of African descent who wanted to go back to Africa would be given 1000 and a plane ticket. So as long as they signed the separatist visa, vowing to never return. Excellent. You are correct. Recorded <laughs> audience cheer. Now, this one is tricky for $1,000. What was the right to birth law of 1991? Lorenzo hits his buzzer. The, the right to birth law of 1991 said that any woman of color who had not married by 30 uh, would agree to sterilization in order to help prevent overpopulation. Why was it only women of color? I asked the questions. Good job! Recorded audience cheer. Next up for $2,000. What was the- Wait, I thought it was all women. Why is it only women of color? Are you seriously going to stop the game for this? Yes, I want to know why. Because in the 90s, women of color were believed to be more fertile than white women. Doesn't this law still exist? Next question for $2,000. What was the great revelation of 2007? Lights change. Scene four. At night, Jules is on her front porch writing in a notebook. Yael comes out on her front porch to smoke a cigarette before she can light it. Those are illegal here. What? 
cigarettes? Here as in, in the neighborhood? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dial throws the unlit cigarette into a plant. I used to drive about 20 miles north just so I could smoke one. Is it because of the kids? Secondhand? Yeah, probably. To some extent, anyway. I think to some extent, people just like controlling other people. Um, may I come over there? Of course. Yael leaves her porch to join Jules. I'm sorry about Alice earlier. It's fine. This neighborhood is supposed to be for family, so I get that she's just a bit intense. Intense is an understatement. My parents are like that. My dad is the super hyper intense one and my mom is the chill anyone goes one. Does that make me your mom? Oh, that's weird. Why is that weird? <laughs> I do think some of it is pregnancy brain. Like it's just kind of makes you loopy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I mean, I figured, wait, shit. I mean, I, <sighs> I was pregnant before. Oh. Yeah, when we applied to move into this neighborhood, I was pregnant. Oh my God, I'm so sorry about Alice. No, no, it's okay. It definitely, definitely isn't. Yeah. You can have that cigarette if you want. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Probably for the best. The neighbors across the street are the worst. <laughs> What happened? Can I ask that? You can ask. Um, I miss Carrie. I'm sorry. Yeah, my third one. Oh shit. Yeah. After three miscarriages, don't they sterilize? Yeah. I didn't get married by 30, so same thing happened to me. Different reason, obviously. There's a reason Alice is pregnant, not me. I am so sorry. We signed a deal with the devil, you know. We need to save our planet, and the overpopulation was a... We did what we had to. Feels like eugenics, right? Like a new sneaky way to police our bodies. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe a little bit of that, too. Was Alice married before? She was. Hilarious. I met her when she was married to a guy named Andy. Oh. Yeah. I'm not saying bisexuality doesn't exist. I am bisexual, but Alice? <laughs> Alice. Alice is the gayest person I've ever met. Was she like cross-stitching a cat when I got in? <laughs> yes. Gay. Gay as fuck. Why did she? She wasn't sure she'd find the right one before she was 30 so she married a man so she could stay you know not sterilized fuck yeah i wonder how they came up the age 30 men seem to think that women expire in our 20s yeah they said they were doing whatever they could to prevent geriatric pregnancies like that was supposed to make me feel even better i think i could have been a Good mother. You still can be. Adoption. You have to be married to adopt. Get married. It's not that easy. Someone as attractive as you, you can get married tomorrow. I should go home. <laughs> okay. Good night. Good night. Yael heads back to her house but lingers on her porch. Jules writes in her notebook. They look at each other. Yael goes inside. Jules goes back to writing. Scene five. The set shifts to show an old school swing dance party. Jules comes out in a hoop skirt and Isaac comes out in a suit. Though they swing dance as they talk, the music doesn't match the dance. If this was color struck, you know, I would tear up this dance floor. No, well, I always tear up a dance floor. I, of course, would have a mental crisis about my complexion. I would leave for another woman. We'd both romanticize the South. 
colorism hasn't changed since then. The tragic mulatto. The legacy of minstrelsy was hard to shake off. The song changes to soul music. If this was Dutchmen, I would end up dead. Black folks always end up dead, even in our own plays. Does that make you Lula? If this was Dutchmen, I wouldn't be in it. Black women didn't exist in plays yet, I guess. The song changes to ragtime. Well, I'm not a colored girl and I've for sure never considered suicide. Lucky you. Didn't need to, the cops will kill me first. Music changes to jazz, they stop dancing. When do we get to be happy? You're not happy? I mean, here, in this space, on this stage, were we ever happy? Are we allowed to be happy on stage? Uh, in Colored Girls, they were happy. They were also abused. What about Rachel? The lynching play. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. They both think for a moment. Sometimes being Black is tragic. Sometimes it's lit, though. Happiness isn't dramatically compelling. There's no conflict in joy. I don't think that's true. Music changes to R&B. Jules, by herself, waltzes off stage. Isaac pulls out a mic as if he's about to sing. Lights change. Scene six. The next day on Lorenzo and Isaac's front porch, Jules and Lorenzo sit drinking beer and playing cards. There is no way she'd go for it. Why not? You think Alice, Alice, who was absolutely the most dramatic human either of us have ever met, will be okay with you taking a second wife? Yes, because it's a sham marriage. Is it? Yael can stay in this neighborhood. What? Tops a year before someone starts freaking out about her not having kids? And she wants kids. How dumb is it that the only reason she can't have a kid is because she's unmarried? Jules, there is no world in which Alice is okay with this. It'll be just a fast ceremony. Isn't, why, isn't it wild that polygamy is legal, but single parent adoption isn't? Like, who would have thought that I, a woman, could have two wives, but not, but my neighbor, a single woman. Your neighbor who is hot. What? Oh, come on, Jules. Do you think I'm blind? I think you're gay. Oh, and what? Heteronormative beauty standards weren't still pushed on me your whole childhood? I can think a woman is hot. I think gay men see attractiveness differently. Oh, so you're not attracted to her? Th that's not why I want to do it. Sure. Lorenzo plays a card. Did you just win? I did. Play again. Lorenzo shuffles the cards. I just think every woman that wants a child should have one. You're projecting now. I'm, I'm just, I'm going to ask her. You're going to ask Yael to marry you or you're going to ask Alice's permission? Yes, to both. Lorenzo deals out the cards. Jules, honey, no. What? You cannot just ask your wife if you can have another wife. There are tons of people with two partners. And you are not one of those people. Well, Alice, your pregnant wife is not one of those people. They start to play. Okay. Who has a bigger heart than Alice? Jules. If Isaac came home one day and met someone who he felt connected and wanted to help, wouldn't you want to help too? Connected to? You know, like, it's not like, she came out onto my porch last night. Oh, Jules. Nothing happened. It just, the sadness in her eyes, Lorenzo. It was like, I have to help her. Are you excited about the baby? What baby? Jules! Oh, Alice! Yes, of course I am. You randomly changed the subject. How was I supposed to know? I was trying to remind you of what you're sacrificing. I'm not sacrificing anything. I'm just trying to help. I think you're looking for a reason to cheat. Again, Alice, your wife is pregnant, Jules. You need to commit 
to that. Stop looking for I reasons to go off. Of them. You don't even know, Yael. You wouldn't get this, Lorenzo. No one cut you up like a science experiment and told you to deal with it. Oh, Jules. <sighs> I'm done talking about this. They continue to play in silence. Scene seven. Alice comes out as a famous actress dressed up on Oscar night about to receive an award. She walks towards the podium, audience applause. What an honor. You know, when they told me I was receiving this award, I just started crying, like ugly crying. I thought, oh me, I am just so honored. Jules For comes out dressed the same as Alice. This is my bit. You had part one, remember? Oh, sorry. Alice leaves the stage. What an honor. You know, when they told me I was receiving this award, I just started crying. Like, ugly crying. I thought... I thought... You know what? Actually, no. I didn't cry. I'm not honored. Why did this take so long? How much longer did you think I could keep, you could keep ignoring my black excellence? Why did I need to have my own studio lot, star in movies I produced and work my ass off twice as hard as anyone else to stand up here and tell you how honored I am? Fuck that. This should have been mine years ago. You should have said something years ago. You can't expect me, expect any of us to fall over and bow when you finally take the time to notice. We've been here the whole time. Take your awards. <laughs> I don't want it because I deserved it years ago. And it's not on me that you didn't realize it until now. Jules leaves the stage. Scene eight. Alice and Yael sit awkward in the living room of Alice and Jules's house. Jules said she'd be here soon. Cool. I am. Um, do you know what this is about? Um, she said she had to ask me something. I when I knocked, I expected her to answer. I I didn't know that you'd be home. Yeah. Right. She didn't say anything to you. She said she had something to ask me. I'm sorry I was so, I didn't realize that you had. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not even sure why I told Jules. She has one of those personalities. People are always just telling her things. It's actually kind Jules of a- Jules comes running in. Sorry I was late, I got caught up at work. Jules, what's going on? I have something very important to ask both of you. And that is? Marry me. We're already married. I don't know. Okay, so I thought about it and I thought about it a lot. Yael, you want kids, right? I, I, I what? Jules. So marry me. <sighs> what the fuck is going on? And then we can connect our homes and like raise our kids together. Have you lost your mind? Alice. I wanted you to be here so you could see it's not romantic. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> batshit. Isaac comes out. Okay, 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 wait a minute. Uh, you're not in the scene. I'm aware, I'm barely in any scenes. <sighs> Isaac walks over to an audience member. Can I see that? Meaning the program. The audience member gives Isaac the program. Thank you. Isaac opens the program. <laughs> What exactly is this play? It's a play about blackness. Sure, sure. Is the playwright black? Of course she is. I mean, it says Afro-Latin, so again, my question stands. She's black, Isaac. <laughs> Lorenzo comes out. All right, okay. And uh, she's from Arkansas? Oh, LA, she grew up in LA. Neither of you are in this scene. 
So how is a sort of black girl from LA gonna write a play about blackness? Oh, that's <laughs> not even the worst part. She grew up in Malibu. She did not grow up in Malibu. No, I saw it online in an interview. Her dad has a house there. That's not where she grew up. Cool. So this rich black girl from maybe not Malibu. She isn't rich. So are we just done with the play then? Cause I got people I wanna see. I'm just saying. <laughs> What makes her the authority of blackness? What is this play even about anyway? Fair, because part one felt like- Like it was about to be some torture porn. Right, and, and so far part two is sort of like a comedy of errors about black maternity, but with queer people. So people came out to see this and are gonna go home and say that this is what blackness is. This is what queerness is. And y'all are just okay with that? I mean, technically she's writing our lines still. So I don't know that we can not be okay with it. I'm just, I'm tired of it. You know, blackness isn't a monolith. So how do you write a play about it and then ask black bodies to get on stage and just do it and just let your version be the version. How is that okay? That's part of the gig though, isn't it? I mean, that's how it works. We get on stage, say some lines, go home. That's how it works. And maybe something's broken there. Blackness is not a monolith. That is not a, this, there's no singular experience. It's not like she's the only black playwright. There are other voices. Right, so can we finish the play, please? You can go see a Brandon Jacob Jenkins play after this one and boom, problem solved. No, problem not solved. Okay, on the real, are you just mad you didn't have a lot of lines? I'm mad that I have to put on all these masks and none of them seem to fit right. Jules's phone vibrates. Oh. Oh. What does blackness mean to you? What? She just texted, playwright. She's asking us. And we're supposed to just answer? Yeah. Okay. What blackness means to me? Blackness means resilience in the face of the constant threat of extinction. And it means comfort and home. And it means being, having roots that are as big and deep and mysterious as the farthest reaches of outer space. That's what blackness means to me. To me, blackness means joyful confusion. It means prideful individualism and expression. And knowing that even though you're different, that's what makes you stronger. That's what makes you unique in the best kind of way. To me, blackness means, I mean, honestly, I'm a little resentful that I have to answer this question because it shouldn't be something that I can say and it shouldn't be something that any of us can say because it's something that's in here. When you're black, you feel it. When you're black, you know it. That's blackness, it's here. That's what it means to me. Um, blackness to me means um, talent, boisterous, loud, proud, strength. Um, it's the most important, it's the most important thing about me and it's taken a long time to realize that, but it feels good to know that now. That's what blackness means to me. 
For me, blackness is spending time with my siblings and just being like the most authentic, not even like code switching or anything, just being. Blackness is just being for me. Um, it's complex, but boy, is it beautiful. That's what it is to me. Blackness. Is not. A. Monolith. Blackness is not a monolith. End of play. <laughs>